Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to try to find the source current when we're given the output voltage. The output voltage is defined by a voltage of 10 volts with a cosine of 2t, which means the angular frequency is 2, which means we need to find the x sub c and the x sub l for the capacitor and inductor. And once we have the impedance in this branch right here, we can then go ahead and find the current in this branch based upon the presumed input current being I sub S, and then we use Ohm's law to find the current and the voltage relationship across that resistor. All right, so let's start out with finding X sub C. X sub C is equal to, let's see, one over J omega C. That would be one over J omega is two, and C capacitance is 0 0.1, so it gives us 0 0.2, bring out the numerator, we get that would be equal to minus J5. For the inductance right here, we get J omega L, which is equal to J times omega again is 2, L is equal to 0 0.5, that would be equal to simply J times 1. And finally, we want to find the impedance in this branch. The impedance here in branch, we'll just call it Z2, we simply add the reactances and the resistances together. Again, we have to realize there's a phase difference here. So this would be equal to X sub C. X sub C is equal to minus J5 plus J1 plus R2 is equal to a two ohm resistor. So it gives us equal to two minus J4. And if we want to use a magnitude and uh, phase angle format of that, that would be 16 plus 4, that's 20. Take the square root of 20, which is 4.47. And on the phase angle, it would be uh, minus 4 divided by 2, that's uh, 2. Take the inverse tangent, that's 63.43 degrees. So now we have the impedance in that branch. So what we're going to do next is we're going to say that I2 is equal to the source current coming into this branch point right there. So the branch point. And the part of the current that goes in here will depend upon the ratio of the impedance in the other branch, which is equal to 1, divided by the sum of the impedance here plus impedance there. So actually, I'm going to write it out. So just write as R1 divided by R1 plus Z2. It's better to write it out so we know where everything came from. So now we plug that in. Oop. We don't want an equal sign there, that's a multiplication sign. So this is I sub S times R1 is 1, divided by 1 plus, and let's go ahead and put in this format right here, that would be 2 minus J4. So this is equal to the source current times 1 divided by, that would be 3 minus J4, and now we want to put that into the uh, magnitude and, and uh, phase angle format, so this is equal to I source times 1 with a phase angle of, let's see, that would be 0 degrees, because that was a resistor, divided by, that uh, would be 5 with a phase angle of 4 <coughs> divided by 3, take the inverse tangent of that, that would be 53.13 degrees, and that's a minus, minus 53.13 degrees, so that would be equal to the source current times 1 divided by 5, which is 0 0.2, with a phase angle of, when you bring this up, that becomes a positive 53.13 degrees. All right, so now we know that that is equal to the current that goes through the output resistor here. Now we're going to use Ohm's law to find the voltage. We know that the current I is equal to V over R. So in this case, we know that I2 is equal to the output voltage, V output, and actually I don't want to put it in this format, divided by the resistance R. So instead of using this V, let's go ahead and use that V, because now we're going to convert into the frequency domain. So in this case, we're going to say that V output is equal to a magnitude of 10 and a phase angle of 0 degrees. Okay, that goes in here, so this is equal to V output, that would be 10, with a phase angle 0 degrees, divided by the resistance, and the resistance is equal to 2, 
with a phase angle of 0 degrees as well. So this is equal to 5 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, and that would be equal to I2. Now I2 is equal to the following. I2 is equal to the source, so now we're going to replace I2 by what I2 is equal to. So we say that I2, which is I source, times 0 0.2 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees, is equal to 5 times a, with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And so to find the source current, we simply now go ahead and divide this by this. So we have the source current, Is, is equal to 5 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by 0 0.2 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And so 5 divided by 0 0.2, that's 25, because that's the same as multiplied times 5, so it would be 25 with a phase angle of minus 53.13 degrees. So that would be the source current. Of course, that's in the magnitude and phase angle format. Now we want to go ahead and put in this format right here. So we can say that I of the source is equal to, we have a magnitude of 25 amps. We're going to use the cosine of 2t. And of course, the phase angle is minus 53 degrees, minus 53.13 degrees. And that would be in terms of amps, of course. And there we go. That's how we calculate the source current if we're given the output voltage. That's how it's done.